Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Science Behind the Scenes. I'm Diane, and today we're talking about digestion and also poop. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this all week long. And um, I have my lovely assistant with me this morning to assist us. This is Avogadro. You guys might have remembered him from our very first Science Behind the Scenes when we talked a little bit about Avi. Um, okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to talk about before we can get to the good part, the poops part, is digestion. And how do we actually make those poops? So we're going to start with a quick digestion experiment. And you can do this at home later on today if you want to. So all I have is a clear Ziploc bag and I have some little baby saltine crackers. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like that we're going to start the digestive process with these crackers. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a bite of a cracker, right? So you're going to put it in your mouth and this is the mechanical digestion part because you're actually chewing it. And in that process of chewing, you're breaking these crackers up into smaller bits and bits so that way you can swallow them and eventually they will end up in your stomach. Now also in your mouth, we begin the chemical digestion process as well because that saliva inside of your mouth contains enzymes. And these enzymes are going to start breaking down some of the different chemicals like the carbohydrates and the starches and the fats and things. Oh, no, Avi, this is not for you. Look at him. You, you want to check it out? Okay, thank you. All right, so we have started this process with a little bit of enzymes, and then we're going to swallow it. Now, once we swallow it, it's going to get into your stomach, and inside of your stomach is stomach acid. And these stomach acid, the stomach acid is very, very strong. So it has a pH of about one to two, which for an acid means it's a strong acid. So I'm going to take something else that also has a little bit of an acidic pH, but not very much. I'm going to take a couple drops of Sprite. A little easier said than done, right? When you got a snake in your hands. And put a little bit of that in there. You can see some bubbling. And then we're going to continue to churn. Because remember, your stomach is actually moving all the time. You know, you can feel your stomach rumble when you get hungry because it's empty and it makes funny noises and you think that it's growling. It's just those stomach acids and those juices in there moving around as your stomach tries to, to move and it's empty, so that's why it makes that noise. So we'll add a little more stomach acid and I do a little more churning. Oh, look at that. And then eventually we're gonna end up but kind of a mushy mess, okay? And that's what it's gonna look like inside of your stomach. Now, depending on how long ago you ate it um, and how long it's been in your stomach, we can take a look at sometimes what the stomach contents are and figure out what it is that you've eaten. And forensic scientists do this all the time when they're trying to establish the time of death. They'll look at stomach contents as one of the ways that they can tell how long a person has been dead. Um, so, let's take a look over here. And Mr. Bones today is sporting his digestion apron. And it's a great way of taking sort of a little bit of a look of what happens once we eat something. So obviously here, it starts in our mouth, and we chew, and we let that saliva start mixing in there. Then it travels down your esophagus. Now your esophagus, you can't feel it, but it's moving. Okay, so it's a smooth muscle, and it keeps like contracting and moving. So once you swallow it, it pushes it down here, into your stomach, and your stomach is just a big bag, okay? So like I said, it's gonna stay here for two to three hours. After about four to five hours, whatever food you had in here will be completely empty. From there, it moves into the small intestine. Now, here's the tricky thing about the small intestine and the large intestine. They're small and large based on their diameter, their width, not their length. Because the small intestine, in an average adult, can be up to 20 feet long. Yeah, think about it. Look at an adult and imagine there's small intestine, there's 20 feet of small intestine packed inside of here, okay? Then the small intestine attaches to the large intestine. Now the large intestine is large because it's bigger around, but it's only about five to six feet long in an average adult. And way down here at our rectum, is the end of our small intestine, and that's where our waste products, our poop, leave our body. Okay, so how long does it take from when you eat 
to when it's completely gone from your body? Depends. It can take anywhere from two to five days. So again, stomach, three to four hours, small intestine, usually through the small intestine by about six to eight hours after you've ingested it. But it can sit in the large intestine for over a day before it actually exit your body. And this is important because it's in here in your large intestine that it starts to reabsorb all of that water. So we're very efficient about hanging on to the water at this point. And that's why your poop turns out to be solid. So what's your poop made of? Well, your poop's made of about 75% water. It's made of dry digestive juices. It's made of carbohydrates and fat and undissolved plant material that you might have eaten. But here's the big thing that it's made of. It is made of bacteria. There's a lot of bacteria, dead bacteria, and some live bacteria that can come out in your poop. Now, why is your poop brown? Well, it gets its brown color from dead red blood cells and also from bile, which is another juice that helps in the digestive process. So it's brown because of dead blood cells, which give it that brown color. Now, I did some great research on this, and I, the whole time I was doing it, I was just giggling and giggling. I couldn't help it. I mean, some of the stuff that we, we can learn about poop is really cool and really neat. But one of the things is a new medical procedure using poop, and it's called a poop transplant. So what we're doing is um, if you're sick and you take an antibiotic sometimes, antibiotics kill bacteria, okay? And a lot of times when we take an antibiotic, it kills the good bacteria and the bad bacteria at the same time. Well, we need bacteria in order to be able to live. Bacteria help us with our digestive processes in and around our small intestines and our, um, throughout this whole process, okay? So they help us to break down our food. And when we are sick and we have an antibiotic, all our good bacteria goes away too. So they are starting to do a poop transplant, which means that they're taking the bacteria, the good bacteria, in somebody that's been sick and transplanting it so that they'll have a good bacteria um, to be able to reflourish and to fill the gap once they, you know, once they're done with their treatment, their medical treatment. Pretty interesting and pretty new, so they're still working on it. I didn't look into the details of how they do a poop transplant. But they did mention that someday they hope to be able to have something along these lines in a pill form, which makes me think it's not in a pill form right now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some animal digestion and animal poop, because I have a whole table full of different types of animal feces, which is what we call poop. Real, uh, it is a scientific term, we call it stool, we call it feces. Um, we call it scat. Scat is a term that's usually used for um, carnivores um, and to describe their poop. So we're going to take a look at some different animal digestions and some animal poops. So that's why I brought Avi along with me today to be a great model for animal digestion. So let's take a look at Avi. So his digestive system runs the entire length of his body. It starts right here in his head. There you go. Show it off. All right. And remember how snakes eat? Snakes swallow their prey whole, okay? So Avi can swallow whole, something that's up to about five times the, side, the width of his head, okay? Um, and he can do that because he can unhinge his jaw, so he can pop out his jaw, thank you, you're gonna give me kisses, and um, swallow that rat that I fed him. I fed him on Friday, so he ate on Friday, so swallow that rat whole. Well, interestingly enough, a lot of animals don't chew. So Avi's not the only type of animal, snakes aren't the only type of animals that don't chew. Actually, it seems like more, fewer animals chew than fewer animals don't chew. So um, again, he'll swallow it whole, crocodiles, a lot of birds will swallow their food whole. Lions, when they take a big chunk of meat, they don't chew it, they just grab it, rip it, and swallow it down. So a lot of animals do it that way. So we think that you know everybody chews like we do and that's not actually the case. So Avi will swallow it whole, okay? It will travel down his esophagus, land in his stomach, okay? And it will stay there uh, and get digested. And then at the very, 
maybe about four or five days later, so again, we're talking about the same sort of a timeline, four or five days later, Avi will make one hoop, okay? And if you can see right down here, oh, are you gonna, there we go. Right down here in the very end of his tail, right where his vertebrae, where his ribs end, his vertebrae goes all the way down, but where his ribs end, there's a little slit right there, okay? And that's where Avi will poop. So his digestive system runs the entire length of his body. And this is what his poop will look like. Now, that was Avi's poop and I cast it in resin. My first pass at it, so not a great job. But the things that I wanted to point out to you is talking about the size of poop. So if you wanna know how big is Avi's large intestine, we'll take a look at the size of this poop. So anytime that you look at a poop, when you're walking around or your dog, or your cat or anybody. So that size is a good indicator of how big their large intestine is. Now, for reptiles and for birds, this is so cool. They have one holding tank, okay? Now, mammals, we poop and we pee from two different places, two different systems, and we can do them independently. So you can go to the bathroom and go pee pee, and then later on, you can go to the bathroom and just go poop, okay? They're not related. You can do them independently. Well, for snakes and birds, they poop and they pee at the same time from the same place because they only have one holding tank. So their solid waste and their liquid waste comes out at the same time. So can you see this white stuff right here that was part of Avi's poop? That's actually his pee. This is called urate. So the things that would be dissolved in a mammal's liquid pee come out as a solid along with the actual feces itself. So it comes out at the same time. So another thing that we can look at as we look at Avi's poop is we can tell that he's very good about conserving water because even his pee is a solid in this case. Okay, so very, very good about conserving water because the, the water that he gets, he mostly gets from the food that he eats. He has a water bowl in his habitat, but very, very rarely does he ever go drink out of it. Okay, so that's why you can tell right here, he just takes all that water out of his meal. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the different poops that we have and talk a little bit about them. So I'm gonna show you some of the poops from the animals that we have. So these are actual animal poops that we have dried out. So this is our leopard gecko. And again, you can see he's a reptile. So you can see the white urate, okay, which is the, the pea part of it, along with the solid material that's in there. And then this is another one of Avi's poops. So you can see, the size is about the same, all right? This gives you a really good idea of what his um, large intestine diameter is. And then this one. This is domestic rabbit poop. And then I'm gonna move forward to, also this is wild rabbit poop. Now, they poop it out as a pellet. Think about it, rabbits eat a lot of hay and grass. And hay and grass mostly has cellulose in it, okay? Remember the cell walls of a plant are made out of cellulose. And that can be very hard to digest. So, okay guys, are you ready for it? Rabbits eat their poop. Yeah, they'll poop it out and then they'll eat it because they need to go back in and extract more nutrition from it and also break down more of that cellulose, okay? So don't be concerned if you have a pet rabbit and it eats its poop. That's absolutely what they are supposed to do in order to be able to get all the nutrition that they can out of their food products. Okay, so let me show you. This is hedgehog poop. Okay, so you can see how tiny that is. See how it has those tapered ends, okay? So that's one of the things that we're gonna look at in poops is a tapered end, okay? And let's go, oh, this was an Eastern gray squirrel. So we rehabbed the squirrel a couple of years ago and then we set it free. Um, and that is its poop. So you can see little teeny tiny pellets there. Um, and this is bearded dragon. Again, reptile, you can see that urate in there, the white portion of it. And if you really looked at that one, you could probably see some parts of crickets in there. So sometimes in our bearded dragons, because they're carnivores and they're 
herbivores, so they eat plants and animals, so they're called omnivores, they eat a little bit of everything. But sometimes when they eat their crickets, they don't fully digest, and you can sort of look in there and you can see like cricket heads and things like that in their poop. Okay, so the next one is guinea pig poop. Again, these guys are uh, vegetarians. They eat a lot of hay. And this is um, Lucy, our red-tailed boa constrictor. Again, her poop looks very much like Avi's, about the same diameter and about the same size. Now, one thing I should say about these guys, snakes are very clean animals because when they eat, again, I said four to five days later, they'll make a poop. They don't poop again until they eat again. So that's kind of nice. So they're really easy to take care of as far as cleanliness goes. Um, and this one, let me see, where is number? Ooh. This is monarch butterfly poop. We had um, one of our family members that had raised some butterflies. Um, she came in and brought me this poop from the caterpillars when she was raising them to butterflies. And this is poop from our rat, our Dumbo rats. Okay, so you can see it's a, it's a little bit larger and a little bit longer and a little bit bigger than the hedgehog poop is. But they basically have about the same diet. And these are our dagoos, Watson and Crick. Again, they are um, part of the rodent family, except they're diurnal, while most other rodents are nocturnal. So again, you can see they sort of have that cylindrical shape to them. And this was our Robo Hamster's poop. A little more rounded, okay, but still very much a plant-based diet. Um, and our box turtle, so we collected this from one of our box turtles outside. And back when we had our Pac-Man frog, and that was his poop. That's pretty big for a frog poop. Frogs or other animals, um, even though they're not birds or reptiles, they also don't chew. So when they eat the insects that they eat, they swallow them whole. They just grab them with their tongue, throw them back there, and swallow them. Um, and then, of course, this little precious poop belongs to our sugar gliders, Marie, Pierre, and Beck. They showed you the wild rabbit poop. Oh, so this one, this is a beauty. Oh, okay. That is the kind of poop that Sebastian makes. Our turtle, that, tortoise, sorry, I always want to say turtle, but our tortoise that you met the same day that you met Avi on our first day of science behind the scenes. And again, you can really see that plant material. Um, Sebastian is a vegetarian, so he eats a lot of hay and he eats a lot of fruits and vegetables. So sometimes those things are pretty high in fiber. Um, foods that are high in fiber give you bulkier poops okay and if they absorb more water if you're not eating things that are high in fiber then you will have less bulky poops okay so that's one of the differences there um, this is our crested gecko and then this this poop is incredible these this is the poop of those goliath worms and you want to show them a picture of a goliath worm jc so they can see what this guy looks like these are worms that we actually buy um, to feed to some of our reptiles. And when we buy them, they come in a little container that has their food in it, and they'll hang upside down and they'll eat the food, and then they'll just poop straight down. So all the poop collects at the bottom of the container. And that's how we were able to get it. So that's probably about the poop of about 20 Goliath worms. And those guys grow really big, really fast. Okay, so I have some other real poops to show you. A couple more of these are a little bit bigger because they belong to animals that are a little bit bigger. So this is actually black bear poop. Okay, so you can take a look at that. Now, it's not unusual for us to find black bear poop in our area because we have a lot of woods around here and we do actually have quite a few black bears that live in our, in our area. Um, so they mostly eat... Uh, uh, they're mostly herbivores, but they will also sometimes scavenger and they will eat meat so that you can sometimes you can see a poop like this and you can actually see berries inside of the poop because the berries didn't digest very well. Um, so then the next one I'm going to show you, this is raccoon poop. And actually you can see some berries in that poop. 
Okay, so you can tell that the raccoon was eating some, some berries. Um, again, because of that plant cell law, that cellulose, that can make it hard to digest. Think about corn, okay? Because sometimes, you know, we like to eat corn, and sometimes it's not unusual to find, like, just corn in your own poop. Again, that can be hard to digest as well. And then this is camel poop. A friend of mine, Mr. Ryan Price, brought me that poop after he visited the Emerald Coast Zoo up in Crestview. And look, isn't it cool? It's like little balls. They come in a shape like a ball. So again, these guys eat a lot of plants, okay? So they have a very high fiber diet. So that gives it that bulkiness to their poop. And then we also have an activity here at the Science Center. So next time you guys come in, once we get open back up, and this has got um, plastic poop. So this is the kind of poop that you can actually get a handle on and play with a little bit. And um, I'm not gonna go through this cat because most of the poop that's in here is some of the poop that we've already shown you that is actually real poop. But um, it's a great way to sort of like take a look at some of these different animals that don't live in our areas. So we have some fox poop and elk poop and get an idea of um, you know what their diet is. So that's another thing that we can tell about an animal's diet is by looking at their poop, the size of their poop, the shape of their poop. Um, so, you know, next time your mom sends you out to clean the cat litter box or to pick up the dog poop in the yard, take a look at it. See if you can figure out what they've been eating. See if you can figure out, now, you know, they smell. It always smells, right? So most of the smell that comes from your poop is because of the bacteria, okay? Because of the, the gases that they're creating as they are munching on your poop and um, coming out of your body. So if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us through um, Facebook and we'll answer them um, as much as possible. And otherwise, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.